What's going on guys, Anti-Hipster Indie Nerd here back with another video. You've probably seen it circulating the internet, but Rolling Stone recently came out with their top 100 albums of 2023. Before I heard about this, I saw this list and knew I had to check out this list. How do you have Sampha's Lay High at 74, but you have Drake's For All the Dogs at 35? It's not even the Drake Deluxe record either. So I haven't checked out their list yet, but that's what we're going to do today. We're going to go through it and see what we think so let's just jump in here and see what's going on with rolling stone magazine 99 depeche mode memento mori now this is a fair pick i think this is a solid album but i wouldn't consider it like uh top 25 or anything like that but it's deserving of being here ray sremmerd srem for life at 95 now i know this record was hyped up to be like as good as some of their previous work but there's not even like a single hit on this album. Chemistry's not there, the production's not there. It's just a really mediocre album to me and would definitely not crack a top 100 albums list. 91, we have Larry June and The Alchemist, The Great Escape. I wasn't as big a fan of record of this record as a lot of other people were. I don't think it's bad and I think it does deserve to be on the top 100. Uh, some of the beats are pretty good, but um, I don't know. I just found a lot of it kind of boring, but it's fine being on here, I guess. 82, we got Jungles Volcano. I'm happy with this pick. I feel like it could definitely be a little higher. I think it's going to crack into my top 50, but I'm at least happy to see it make the list. At 77, we have BB Rex's BB. I don't know why this is on here. This, this might be one of the worst picks yet so far. And we talked about it earlier. I do not know how Lay High is this low on the list. It should definitely be in the top 25 at the very least. 67 we have the barbie soundtrack now there's a lot of good songs on this soundtrack but i'm just so against putting soundtracks and compilations into a year-end list it's it's not an album it shouldn't count it's a compilation of songs from different artists so i just never understood the concept of putting um compilations into an year-end list for albums 64 pink pantheresses heaven knows this is another one that I feel like should be much higher. I mean, some of the production on this is incredible and the vocal performances are really good too. Um, this should at least be top 50. Are you kidding me? They put this Melanie Martinez record on the list? This is ridiculous. Who is making these lists? This is a travesty. How is this not in the top 10 to 25? This is one of the best jazz rap albums that has come out in the last 10 years. This is a travesty. Ice Spice makes sense that she's on here. She had a really big year, but the album itself just isn't that deep. And I feel like better things are going to come later in her career. This would have been like further towards 100 to 90 range for me. Dominic Fike's Sunburn in the top 50. Dominic Fike's got a good voice and everything, but this album is so boilerplate. It's not doing anything new. It's just like typical indie music, and, and I don't know why it's on here. Same goes for this Yola Tango album. I'm a big fan of the band, especially their older work, but this album just wasn't that great. Gonna A Gift and a Curse at 48. This album probably wouldn't even make my top 100, but if it did, it would be way towards the back. This is another one that shouldn't be in the top 50. Kara Jackson is only at 40? I'm glad it made the top 50, but I mean, it's, it's one of the most unique albums to come out this year, and... I feel like it could be higher, but I guess I can't be too mad. At least they put it on the list. Look, I like this record, but it was one of the most disappointing releases of the year. It could have been so much better than it was, and it kind of sounded unfinished in some areas, but there's a couple decent songs. It would probably break a top 100, but 38 is way too high. We already saw this. This is ridiculous. I don't know why it's even in the top 50. Caroline Polachek, Desire I Want to Turn Into You. Uh, happy to see this one here. Uh, for Rolling Stone standards, I think it's a pretty good number. Uh, for me, it would be much higher, but good to see it on the list. Uh, I didn't listen to this record fully, but there were some really good singles from it. Uh, so I'll have to check it out. But, uh, but yeah, I'll check this one out. 26 is Amare's Fountain Baby. Another one that could probably be a little higher. Like, they could have at least gave it top 25. I mean, come on. The, the singing performances, the production is so good. Uh, I think it should be top 25. But once again, not too too mad about this one. 25, Jason Isbell in the 400 unit, Weather Veins. 
Uh, good placement for this one. Definitely one of the better country releases of the year. So happy to see this one on here. Lana's record. I think this is a fair placement. It's a really good record. I wasn't the biggest fan of it, but the songwriting and production is really good. I just feel like it kind of gets a little bit repetitive. Okay, Scaring the Hose at 19. Personally, probably a top 10 release for me. But once again, credit to Rolling Stone for putting this one on here. JC Ware, that feels good. I think this is just about the perfect placement for this one. 15, Sufjan Stevens with Javelin. I know Rolling Stone tends to be pretty big Sufjan fan, so yeah, happy with number 15. It's a really, really good record. No Name Sundial at 13. This record is nowhere near as good as Room 25 or Telephone. Top 100, sure. Number 13, this is absolutely ridiculous. 10, Zach Bryan's self-titled record. I'm honestly really happy with this. Um, I think it's deserving of a top 10 spot. Uh, has some of the best songwriting I've heard this year and is definitely my favorite country release of the year, so can't be mad at this one. Number 8, they put Maps by Billy Woods and Kenny Siegel. That's awesome. That's a really good pick. Shout out to Rolling Stone for this one. 7, we got the Mitski record, which I really enjoyed. Sad indie vibes pretty consistent all around uh, number seven is a little high for me but good record six paramore this is why this is a well-deserved spot for paramore i mean Haley williams killed every performance on this the band really found a new rhythm and experimented with a sound they haven't really done in the past and did a really good job at it so happy with number six let's get into the top five number five <laughs> Of course, it's Guts by Olivia Rodrigo. Now, I love this record. It's going to make my top 50, but I feel like five is really, really high. The hits on it are great. Olivia does a great job uh, with the songwriting, uh, and the production team behind her also did a good job. So, yeah, um, wouldn't put it all the way in the top 10, but it's a really good record. For Lil Yachty's Let's Start Here, kind of the same story for me. Love how Yachty was able to reinvent himself on this album, but... Number four is way too high. Number three is Taney's Data. Look, this is another record that's pretty good, but the, the top three, let alone the top 10, let alone maybe even the top 25, I feel like that's just, that, for me, that's just not, it's, it would not even crack my, my top 30, probably. Number two is Boy Genius is the record. Look, I love this album. It's another one that's going to make my top 50, but the number two album of 2023, an extremely stacked year with a lot of amazing releases, that's kind of absurd. The songs are written well. The performances are really good. Um, I love the messages of most of the songs, but there's a couple duds on there and a couple head scratcher lyrics that just don't make me think this is worthy of a number two spot. I feel like their self-titled EP released a couple years ago is a lot stronger than this. And like I said, the record's gonna make my top 50, but number two is kind of insane. And number one is SZA's SOS, which actually came out in 2022, but came out in like late December. So um, not mad at them for including it on here. SOS is a great album. I, I love it, but I don't know if it's the best album of the year, especially because it technically came out the year before. I guess I can't be too mad at the pick. I mean, it became huge with Kill Bill and everything like that, and uh, definitely is one of the best R&B releases in recent memory, but I'm going to be releasing my top 50 albums soon, so check mine out and you'll see how it compares to this one. On Tuesday, I'm dropping my top 50 singles of 2023, so make sure you check that one out too. Without further ado, guys, let me know what you think about this list, and I will catch you in the next one. See you later.